What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. So for today's video, I've decided I'm going to choose violence. I love the MCU. Ever since Iron Man 1, I've been aboard the MCU hype train. I've been there since the beginning, you guys, since the dawn of time, aka 2008. Now, ever since we've entered the age of the MCU having shows on Disney+, Plus, initially at first, like most folk, I was excited. I love stories, and I love different formats of storytelling. Whether it's books, TV, movie, games, if you have a story to tell for a particular medium, then tell that story. However, back then, I was but a sweet summer child. I was still high off of Endgame, as I was not anticipating the storm that was to come. Aside from a few, you know, like Loki and half of Miss Marvel, the MCU shows have been really bad, and I believe personally that the MCU shows is what's killing the Marvel brand, and it's why people in charge, people like Bob Iger, Kevin Feige, need to scrap all the remaining shows and or plans for future shows, Loki season two being one exception. Instead, what they should do is find a way to integrate the characters from those shows into the movies and move on from there, because this format is just not working. And I'm afraid that if they keep going down this route, it's not gonna help instill everlasting trust for the MCU. Now, why is this the case? Well, that's why you clicked on this video, because I'm gonna tell you guys the reasons as to why the MCU shows are just not doing what needs to be done, and why the MCU needs to stop making shows. So let's get started. Number one is the pacing. One of the reasons why the MCU movies are so beloved is the fact that a lot of their movies don't waste time. The editing is punchy, a majority of the scenes are there to serve the characters and the plot. Take for instance a movie like Captain America the Winter Soldier. There's a lot of heavy themes in that movie. Aside from it being a superhero movie, it has a lot of things to say about you know trusting your government. And with it being a political thriller, it manages to still be a Captain America centric movie but also it manages to provide commentary about current topical issues. Which at the time of the movie's release, you had a lot happening with the US government conducting surveillance on its people or drone strikes during the Obama presidency. You see, the real world isn't black or white. The one exception really is World War II, which is really the only time in history when the world knew who was good and who was bad. Generally speaking, the world is very gray, and Captain America the Winter Soldier showcases those themes masterfully, while at the same time progressing the character of Steve Rogers and his supporting cast. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is an example of poor pacing. Now, sadly, the villains for the series, their plot within the show was affected by real life COVID, but nonetheless, we're going to use them as the example. The main purpose of the show is Sam learning to accept his responsibility as a black man into becoming Captain America. That's an interesting story. However, the Flag Smashers and their story get in the way. Throughout the entire show, the writers want us, the audience, to feel sympathetic towards the Flag Smashers. However, with every episode, we know that the Flag Smashers need to be stopped. They need to get their asses handed, yet Sam is determined to try and save Carly, their leader, from going down a darker road. Oh no, God! All that is a waste of time. Carly has already killed many people. She is a terrorist. The show should have focused the time we spent with the Flag Smashers and focused more so on Sam's inner conflict with the S.H.I.E.L.D. and how someone like John Walker isn't the right person to take up the mantle of Captain America. This show could have been a movie. Heck, it could have been three of the four episodes. There's some good ideas to be had, that's for sure, but the show is muddled by all the extra fat surrounding the good stuff. And as much as I like Baron Zemo, we probably didn't need him for the show, nor do we need Sharon. US Agent should have been the main villain, and Sam should have fought him for the shield and to showcase why he was chosen to become Captain America. Number two, a lack of communication between writers and filmmakers. Now, initially, I was a fan of WandaVision. I believe the show had a very unique take on how Wanda deals with loss, and I thought both Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany's performances shined all throughout. And as a result, it brought their B to C level status from the movies to, hey, these heroes can be main stars, especially Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. I like Wanda in the movies, but WandaVision really solidified her into becoming a major pillar for the MCU. However, along came a movie called Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the follow up to WandaVision. Now, I have many issues with that movie, but one of my main issues is how the movie continues Wanda's story and her character from WandaVision. Where the show ends with Wanda and where Doctor Strange 2 takes her, it's like night and day. What an entirely different character. And because of it, it's super jarring. Check it. At the end of the show, Wanda feels bad for having taken over her town. And yeah, she gets the Darkhold in return, but still, 
we understand that she has some level of remorse. And though we get a sense that the Darkhold can corrupt the mind, it's not really highlighted to the viewer. Essentially, it's like, what if Daenerys Targaryen went from being a mother of dragons, you know, a kind young woman who wants to bring love to her country, and instead says fuck it and burns the entire world. Oh wait, <laughs> that basically what happens to Wanda's character. All the growth and character progression we saw from WandaVision and the movies, fuck you. Thus, it was later revealed that Sam Raimi, the director who stepped in following Derrickson's departure, didn't even watch WandaVision, nor did he read the script. What? <laughs> Talk about a lack of communication, a lack of synergy. That shit would never fly during the Infinity Saga. And the same thing happened with Secret Invasion. The director of the show straight up told the internet, yeah, I think Rhodey was maybe taken during the events of Civil War. You think? <laughs> like, I don't know, man, maybe you should, you know, know for sure so that the audience isn't confused as fuck. So yeah, lack of communication between story and filmmakers. And number three, too much is being introduced with little death. One of the reasons why many people care about the MCU and its characters, heroes like Iron Man, Captain America, and Black Widow, is because we the audience have grown with these characters. We have developed a bond with them. However, it didn't always start off with love at first sight. Take for instance Black Widow in Iron Man 2. She's not really a character. She's more of an accessory for that movie. However, once we meet up with her again in Avengers, she's given a lot more to do and say. We learn more about her. Instead of just being a woman who's super hot, we understand her relationship with S.H.I.E.L.D with Hawkeye, a hint at her dark past, there being blood in her ledger. The MCU gave us time to sit with her character and to grow with her, along with characters like Loki so that, you know, when something happens, we feel something. Aside from a few new faces, generally speaking, not a lot of these new characters have stuck out with general audiences. I think partially this has to do with writing, but another reason is too much content is being released. Marvel is way too spread out. Back in the day, they would do at least three movies per year. Now they do three movies and three shows per year. Marvel Studios needs to cut back. Instead of an Echo show that no one asked for, maybe work on the Eternals too. Progress those characters so that the audience can feel more attachment for them. Work on a sequel for Shang-Chi that doesn't take place, you know, five to six years after the release of the first movie. Or heck, maybe put more emphasis into making your Blade movie. Divert your resources into projects and continue to build them. Perhaps the idea of the MCU having shows was a cool idea at first, but the manner in which they've been executed isn't working. Instead, the shows have now become homework for the MCU. And spoilers, people hate homework. Stick with the movie format. Take your time in developing stories and good films. The MCU isn't loved because of the amount of shows and projects we get. We love it because we are given good stories. So yeah, as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload and so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions? Do you guys think Marvel should stop making shows? What's your take on the current state of the MCU? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace. Giggity goo.